This is gonna be such a great selfie. Look out! He's trying to take a selfie! Ruin it! God damn it. Worth it! Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning you good. First off, I just wanted to address what an awesome response we got for last week's voice tutorial. To tell you the truth, I thought that was going to be the weak link in this season, but you embraced it oh so tightly, and totally proved me wrong in the process. Now, on to today's effect, and I feel like a bit of a broken record saying this, but once again it came from a bunch of different subscribers, so here's a random request. Ultra Assassin 64 asks, is it possible for you to do the whole slow-mo thing where the flash moves normally, but everything else stands still? Well, if you saw the opening clip, and I know you did because you're watching this, you know it is my son. Now in order to complete this effect, you'll need a camera or even an iPhone that shoots slow motion or at least 60 frames per second and then utilize a plugin like Twixter or the native After Effects plugin to slow it down further. But my camera, the Panasonic GH4, can natively shoot 96 frames per second, so I'm going to be using that. I'll post a link to a Twixter demo down below. Now as far as shooting goes, we'll need two or three passes depending on your level of detail. Our first is a background layer with our extras filmed in slow motion. And next shot is our actor on a green screen reacting to the slow motion going on. And lastly, if you need it, is an actor in the foreground also shot on said green screen. You can also grab that sweet slow down sound effect in the description. Now let's get to work. Okay gang, let's get started. I've got our shots set up in a comp all ready to go, but I'll just address something really quick. As you saw in the opening, I had a shot of me holding the phone before the slow-mo went down. So instead of setting up and shooting that, I just shot that on the green screen as well and comped in a blank background plate from our slow-mo footage. They most likely didn't do this on the show, but I'm short of time, so I cheated a little. So if you want to do the same, just make sure you shoot an empty background for this shot. Now that we've got that out of the way, onto the main attraction. And guys, seriously, guys, this is really easy. As you can see, I've already got my shot keyed out and ready to go. So I'm just going to grab my slow-mo shot that I've imported from Premiere Pro and drop that straight to the bottom. From there, let's scrub along the timeline until our two actors have come into frame. We'll then hit Ctrl Shift D to split the clip. We'll then highlight the first part of our split clip, right click, head up to time and select time stretch. Now since I shot this at 96 frames per second, to get it to normal speed, I'll have to bring it down to 25%. But by all means guys, have a play here. The lower the percentage, the faster your footage will be. Let's then click OK. As you can see, it significantly shrunk our footage layer. So let's select our second part of the clip, hold shift, and we'll marry those ends straight back up. If I turn off the top layer, we can check out a preview. Not bad, but in the show, it returns to normal speed in the same shot, right? Well, they cut away for a second, but you get my point. And you'll never guess how we're going to do that. If you just said, I don't know, I'm going to need you to hand back your badge and go. Let's scrub along the timeline until we find a point where we want the action to resume. Hit Control Shift D to split the clip, select that final clip, right click, head up to time, and time stretch once more. Now this time, I want to ramp it back up a little faster since my actor, i.e. me, falls down and I really want that impact felt. And I also hesitated falling as to not break my hands. So I'll bump it down to 12.5% this time, and I'll click OK. Let's turn our top layer back on. Now since these boys are technically in the background, we need to blow them out a little since I'm shooting with a fairly low depth of field. So with our first background part selected, let's head up to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, and add a camera lens blur. The only settings I'll change here is I'll bump the blur down to 2.5, and I'll check Repeat Edge Pixels. We'll then copy that effect and paste it on the two other layers. Our last point of order here is to trim the end of the clip, if you need to. So we'll scrub down on the timeline to where our background footage ends, hit N on the keyboard to trim it, right click on the work area bar and select trim comp to work area, and let's check out a preview. Done. Add up all those steps and you'll get something like this. Mmm, this is going to be such a great selfie. Look out! He's trying to take a selfie! Ruin it! God damn it. Worth it! So that's the flash slow motion effect. It's pretty easy to accomplish if you've got the right gear, and even if you don't, it's still doable by slowing down your background footage inside After Effects. But that's my time, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please like and share it. If you're new here, do the clicky dance right there on that subscribe button. Right there. 
You can hit me up on Twitter or Facebook for previews of upcoming episodes. And until next week comes around and we speed back up to the maximum, it's a subtle hint. Keep learning!